So when you download the project from the link below, what you should have is this model here, which has a walking and idle animation. You should have this chest, which has an open, closed, opening and closing animation. And that's about all you should have. I'm going to do the camera controller as a separate video. So for now, what you want to do is position your camera so you can see everything on the scene. Something like that would be good. Let me just get that out of there. You'll have a camera just hanging out over here. And what you want to do is click on the camera, go into As Game Objects, and go Align with View. So now the camera, when you press play, will be able to see everything that's going on. Right. So now what you want to do is add the essential scripts. So go create a new folder, call it scripts. And I'm just going to drag these scripts in here. And these are all the scripts you need for this tutorial. And in fact, this one is blank and this one is blank. But they have to be there because um, otherwise there's going to be errors and I couldn't be bothered changing the code that much. And besides, we'll need these scripts in the next tutorial when we learn how to loot chests and do all that sort of stuff. So, you need to make a script. One of them is going to be called int chest here. One of them is going to be called interactable inventory. Oh, I got lazy and didn't finish a comment there. And then world interaction. Okay, let's open up these scripts and and fill them out. So world interaction. Make sure you're, you've put up the top using Unity Engine AI. If you don't do that, it won't know what anything is. Let me show you what I mean in terms of the pathfinding. So if you comment that out, then suddenly says, hey, there is no such thing as a nav mesh agent. That's just because you don't have the namespace. So make sure that's there. Right, so we start off, we got uh, a nav mesh agent, that's something we need to attach to the, the player in order for the pathfinding to work. Active player, animator, we'll talk about that soon. And then we've got these boolean values, which we'll talk about also. And this stuff here, we've got a, a, a finite state machine, which if you're new to finite state machines, this might be a good introduction to them and how they work. Okay. So copy, make sure the namespaces are there. Now copy these variables, including those, these variables here. Copy these finite state machines, although this one is a bit messy and it's kind of unnecessary. But just copy it anyway, it won't take very long. So copy those, those um, finite state machines. Have a look at start, copy all of that in the start method. Have a look at the update, copy those. Now this is the move finite state machine. You see I've uh, commented that one out. That's about that's for the next video when we look at interacting with chess. So we don't need to worry about that one at the moment. But just copy that move states, this move finite state machine. And we'll talk about how this works and what a finite state machine is and why they're so great. I love finite state machines. Without finite state machines, what you have to do is make this really complicated mess of booleans and if statements. A finite state machine, just in brief, what it means is that if you've got something in here and you're in this state, then that's all that's happening. Nothing else will be happening. Now you can be sure that if you're in this state, then only the code within that is being executed. And that takes that, ma that makes the code a lot cleaner and a lot easier to debug because you don't have to worry about all these different things happening at once and update. You'll know that only this is happening, at least in this script. Okay, so copy this one as well. This is what we do to work out what, what to do when, when the path is reached. So I probably should have called it something more descriptive, like, um, anyway, it's fine. Yeah, maybe I should move to end, right? Because this method happens when the player is moving, 
and then it kind of stops when they've reached the end. So that's a little bit more descriptive. I think I mentioned in the last video that it's really important to have descriptive methods so you know what's going on. Okay, now this one is the turn to face method. Copy that one. That's the whole method. This is what allows us to, when we reach the end of the path, see, let's see if I can make sense of this for you. So here we go. Let's say, basically, when the distance that's left is less than or equal to the stopping distance, um, that's a nav mesh thing. So basically, when you've reached the end of the path, then we want to set the speed to zero. That will trigger the idle state. Uh, we want to say the path has been reached. That's true. And then we want to move to the turn to face state in the move finite state machine. Oh, move to move. Very good. Which is here. So we go from this one, we're in move, and we're doing this move to end thing. And we're traveling along the path until we reach the end of the path. And then once we've reached the end of the path, we move to the turn to face state in the finite state machine. And then this is executed, this method here, which is here. And that allows us to turn to face the interactable in question. Right. When we've reached the end of that, we go to the interact FSM. But that's something I've commented out because we're not going to be opening chests and doing that sort of stuff in this video. Else, if we're not dealing with an interactable, if we've just hit the ground, then when the path is reached, move to this empty state here. Nothing's happening in this, and that's good. You don't want anything to happen here. That means the person's here, and this state machine is not going to be doing anything, and it's just waiting for me to do something. So I'll click somewhere, and then it will activate another state or something like that. So let me just go through again, because I was kind of explaining and scrolling around. Copy these variables. These state machines, the start method, update, move states, the move finite state machine, move to end, turn to face, and this is important. This is the method which detects a, a mouse click and creates the location for the nav mesh and all that sort of thing. So get interaction is where where most of the magic happens. Right, so let's do it section by section because it won't all fit on the screen. I wonder if I can get rid of that. Oh, somewhat. Okay. So if you're new to Raycast, I'll explain it in more detail later. For now, just focus on copying everything from there to there. So you've got to the end of this if statement there, you've got that bracket. Then once you've done that, focus on copying everything from there to there. And now you should have exactly the same script as me. This seems to be the approach that I'm taking for now, where I scroll down and make you copy everything, and then I, afterwards I'll explain it a bit more. So far, no one's complained. So I'll carry on this in this way with the rationale that you copying scripts is good um, for your scripting practice. Okay. So now the inventory script. Yep, you basically just make an in, uh, empty script. That's it. Inventory inherits some order behavior. None of these are necessary for now, uh, but you might as well leave them there because they will be necessary. And if you've done my equipping tutorial. Um, you already have a fully fleshed out system and this should just slot in perfectly. Inchest is also empty, but note that it inherits from interactable. So just make that change. Not mono behavior, interactable. And interactable is quite a short script, so it won't take too long for you guys to copy. Hmm, it's a weird debug. I think that's me learning about inheritance. Okay. Yeah, so copy that. And these, I don't think will ever be necessary, so let's get rid of those. 
Okay, those are the four scripts that you need. I'll just check to see if anything was cut off because that's happened in the past. Uh, no, good. Obviously not there, there's nothing in it. And that's it, so not much. And now let's look at hooking these scripts up to the character in the game.